At Hurricane, we've spent the past 14 years in corporate video production. And in that time, we've made hundreds of promotional videos for brands. And we've got very good at it. But what is it that actually makes a corporate video engaging? And how do you make video content that's actually worth watching? To help you with this question, this blog returns to one of my most popular themes and looks at how connecting with an audience at an emotional level is key to brand growth. It doesn't matter whether you're selling stationery, soft drinks, machinery parts, or holidays. Your customers have feelings, worries, and cares, and you need to make sure they feel the right way about you. We are going to explore how emotion can be used to create more effective corporate videos and brand promos. Firstly, we will look at why emotion drives behavior change, especially in video, and why this is key to brand growth. And then we move on to look at how you can develop and roll out more effective content built around an emotional connection. So let's start with section one, why emotion works and how to use it. Humans have evolved storytelling and listening to emotional stories from the very first cave paintings to scary narratives of monsters around the campfire. It's how we've always communicated and understood the world around us. Indeed, when humans see or hear a story, a lot of things happen. Firstly, our brainwaves change, the amygdala and hippocampus kick in to remember things. Our language centers spark up ready to understand the world and our brain is flooded with neurotransmitters and hormones like vasopressin, serotonin, endorphins, oxytocin, and the one I've talked a lot about before, dopamine. These chemicals cause emotion to kick in, which hijacks our cortex, making us forget about using our observant, considered judgments. Instead, we move to a reliance on emotional decision-making. Just to illustrate how content sparks emotion, let's run a quick test. Take a moment to think how you feel now. Which part of you is working to follow this blog? Is it your brain or your emotions? How does concentrating feel? And how would you describe your emotions right now? Got it? Now watch this video and come back to the blog. Okay, so how do you feel now having watched that? How did just 92 seconds of video totally change your mood? Well, what happened? Well, you had an emotional response, probably one best summed up as distress and empathy. But what actually made you feel that? And how do we apply that to corporate video production? Well, your body and mind were flooded with neurochemicals that directly affected your mood. This has been studied in detail by Dr. Paul Zak, a founding pioneer in the emerging field of neuroeconomics, and he's based at the University of Massachusetts. He showed hundreds of people an emotional video about the incredibly sad story of a father who won't play with his little boy Ben as he can't bear to watch him slowly dying of cancer. It's an incredibly sad story. Dr. Zak closely monitored the neural activity of hundreds of people who viewed Ben's stories, and he went on to prove that the emotional video triggered hormonal responses. What's more, he went even further and demonstrated that neurochemicals not only changed our mood, but changed our behavior. I'll let Dr. Zak explain his own findings in this clip. So in my laboratory, we've studied this story extensively, 
And what we found is that two primary emotions were elicited. One is distress and the other is empathy. At the same time, when we asked people what they felt after the story was over, we really couldn't get very clear answers. So we began doing other studies on this story. So we took blood before and after, and we found that the brain produced two interesting chemicals. One is called cortisol, which focuses our attention on something important. So cortisol correlated with our sense of distress. So the more distress you felt, the more cortisol you released, and the more you paid attention to that stimulus. The second chemical release is called oxytocin, which is associated with care and connection and empathy. And oxytocin was correlated with people's sense of empathy. And the more oxytocin they released, the more empathic they felt towards Ben and his father. Now, we did something different after this experiment. We gave individuals a chance to share money with a stranger in the lab. And indeed, those who produced both cortisol and oxytocin were more likely to donate money generously to a stranger they couldn't see in the lab. In another experiment, we gave individuals a chance to donate money to a charity that works with children who are ill. And indeed, those who released oxytocin and cortisol donated money to this charity. And in fact, the amount of oxytocin released predicted in both cases how much money people would share with a stranger or with charity. What we're seeing is that this narrative is changing behavior by changing our brain chemistry. It's the final point here that we are changing behaviors by changing brain chemistry that's so incredibly important for us as marketers. To change behavior, we have to make the audience feel something. To underline how important emotional messages are in business, let's take a look at a study conducted by the IPA. Now, the IPA analyzed over 1,400 advertising campaigns submitted for the IPA Effectiveness Award over the last three decades. The IPA compared campaigns which relied on emotional appeal only versus those which used rational persuasion and information. And here's a link in the copy below to that. Now, we can see that 16% of brands running campaigns with rational messages at their core reported very large profit gains. This went up to 26% of brands who were running emotional and rational messages, and they also showed large profit gains. But the real winners were brands that went all out on emotional messaging at the core of corporate adverts or brand films, with 31% of these companies reporting large brand growth. Now, we live in a complex world and I've just massively oversimplified it. I have actually got a whole other set of lectures which explain how emotional messages has to be combined with rational thinking throughout the sales funnel. But for now, just take from this that emotional connections will drive long-term brand growth. If you need to be convinced any further, read Byron's How Brands Grow, The Long and the Short of It from the IPA, or Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, or indeed my own book, Video Marketing Strategy, and you will need no further convincing that emotional storytelling is the way to grow a brand. But this is a corporate video I hear you cry. My corporate video is so dry, there's no way I can make people feel anything about what we do. Well, that simply is not true. No matter what a product or service, it's possible to make content that connects emotionally. In section two, I'll be looking at how you do it, but for now, here's a film from a brand called Talia that proves my point. Meaning no disrespect to Talia, their product is insanely dull, unless you happen to find online invoicing software exciting. But they have still found an emotional driver that engages people, and they've had some fun along the way. Let's take a look. When you don't invoice electronically, you spend time manually inputting your invoices. When you spend time manually inputting your invoices, you get a repetitive stress injury. When you get a repetitive stress injury, you ask for time off work. When you ask for time off work, the intern fills in. When the intern fills in, he does a better job than you. When he does a better job than you, he gets offered a job. And when he gets offered a job, he becomes your boss. Don't let the intern become your boss. Allow suppliers to submit free electronic invoices through Talia. Okay, so in section one, I've shown why emotional content connects with us and why this matters to all corporate video production, including B2B. Now we can dig into how to use it. And there are three simple steps any brand can take to make their emotional messaging more effective. Step one is easy. Define who you are talking to. Now, this 15 minute presentation isn't the place to go into detail about marketing segments and personas, but it's worth stating that all effective content starts with the understanding of what makes your audience tick. 
And this is very often something that B2B marketers especially, and people making corporate videos generally, can forget about. They instead focus instead on features and benefits. The classic things that people include when thinking about personas are just simple straight demographics like age, education, social status and so on. But don't forget that you are talking to a person, not a statistic. Understanding the pressures that your customers face, along with knowing their hopes and dreams, will be far more useful than someone's age. So to be more effective, revisit your target personas as soon as possible and be more human. What is it that these people are genuinely worried about? As inspiration, think back to the Talia film, which understood that they were talking to an audience that might be worried about losing work to someone more efficient. Once you have an understanding of your audience, we can move on to step two, which is emotional drivers. Now I bang on about emotional drivers all the time because they're the key to effective brand content. Which levers can you pull that resonate with an audience at an emotional level? This includes their hopes and fears and their goals in life, both public and private. For me, private goals are always more effective in content than public ones. As an example, let's just assume that you're talking in your corporate video to medical professionals such as a surgeon. Their public goal could well be to give a better treatment to patients, but in private they may actually be motivated by how much kudos they will get if they use a new product, by the desire for low rates of complications so their publicly viewed results go up, or just that they like to finish work early and get to the golf course and leave it all behind. You really have to think it through. Now, when I'm running workshops with clients around this, I ask brands to think of the things that will make their customers care about or want their product. We start with the optimistic, the things that you would hope your customers care about. Saving the planet, making the world better, delivering a better service, all those kind of things. Next, I ask my clients to be a little more cynical in what benefits they think their customers really want. For example, they might want to look great to their boss and get a promotion. They may just want an easy life because they're lazy or they may just need to keep their job. Running this simple exercise around the things that actually drive your audience is always an eye opener for brands and whenever I run this session it always leads to more effective content. So now we know who you're talking to and what makes them tick. Step three is integrating this into your content. To help with this at Hurricane we've developed a very simple model that we call EFG which is a super helpful way of structuring content. EFG stands for Emotion, Fact and Go. Effective content opens with an emotional message that is directly linked to the emotional driver of your audience. Once that connection is made and it's a deep emotional connection, your content can go on to cover more dry facts. Now typically we should try to include the lowest quantity of facts needed to persuade the audience of what we're saying. Yes, somewhere in your marketing stack you need to get into mega detail, especially if you're in B2B, but leave that late in the customer journey. In the early stages, make sure you keep to emotional connections and limited facts. Finally, content must drive go actions. It must drive people to do something, which is normally best done by linking back to the emotional driver at the start. Let's take a moment to see this EFG structure in action. And for this, I'm going to talk about a corporate film that Hurricane made for Airbus Defence and Space a few years ago. I'll talk you through the EFG structure to see how all that fits together. Airbus Defence and Space makes satellites which orbit the Earth and take ultra high definition photographs. And those photographs are used by everyone from farmers and charities to governments and the military. Typically, marketing for this has been around the specification of the satellites and the clarity of the amazing images. But Hurricane were brought in to connect emotionally with audiences. We developed an idea around the emotional driver that People who use this technology wanted to actually make the world a better place. They didn't just want great pictures. And once we'd done that, we built an EFG structure for the film that went like this. The film starts by connecting with viewers, not with technical specifications, but by asking them to consider the challenges faced by the world and asking how they will do something about them. It poses a huge question about future generations. Once viewers have been emotionally engaged because they can see that the brand thinks like they do, the film moves into more traditional corporate video territory and runs through a list of facts about the company. Now for me, there are way too many facts. Indeed, it could be a useful exercise for you to watch this and think about which facts you could do without to help you avoid the same mistake. Finally, the film ends with rousing imagery that connects the emotional drivers that were at the start of the film with a call to action. 
As an interesting note on this, there is only one satellite in this entire film, and it appears right at the very end very briefly, which is a total break from the traditional marketing in the sector, and also why the film was so effective. Uh, there is a link in the copy below so you can go and watch that film, so just go and do that and come back. And there we have it. We started this session by looking at why emotional content works, and then we looked at the impact emotional content can have on brand growth. With that out of the way, we moved into section two and took three simple steps to apply emotional content in B2B brands and promo videos. Specifically, we looked at the need to understand the personas of who you're talking to and how to use these to develop emotional drivers. With that done, we looked at the simple model of EFG, which helps you structure emotion into your content to help brand growth. I hope this has been useful. There's plenty more videos on the blog. There's some on the uh, Video Marketing Strategy channel. If you would like any advice, just give Hurricane a call. We look forward to speaking to you soon.